Hey guys and welcome to Inish Tracks Outdoors. This week we're going to be showing you how we like to make deer feeders. We've tried, you know, different kinds over the years and so far this has been the design that we like the best for being able to put a lot of feed out, especially in those areas uh, where we might not be able to go uh, and get to as often as we would like, you know, uh, to be able to fill them full of corn. Yeah, I mean it's kind of just a DIY project that we came up with. Uh, we were lucky enough to draw our Kansas tags again this year and being here in Northwest Arkansas, it takes us roughly about four hours to get out to where we hunt. So we can't be making that trip back and forth as often as we'd like. So we came up with this, that way we'll be able to go out and fill the feeder up and you know, feel comfortable leaving it for, you know, sometimes a month or month and a half. And then hopefully only have to go out there like two times before season opens and we'll be ready to go. So anyway, we're gonna get busy here and we're gonna start showing you just some of the simple things you're gonna to need to make it. Um, making this feeder, we was able to find the 55 gallon drums on Facebook Marketplace and so you can look around. Uh, we did go ahead and make sure that we got the drum with the locking lid and the rubber gasket. That's gonna make sure and keep your corn or your feed in there dry. We don't want any water to get in there that could spoil it or allow it to stick and draw moisture. So we've got the, the lid there. Uh, we took the barrel and uh, we just kind of beat it. You're gonna need the hammer or something. We took a piece of four inch pipe and with that four inch pipe, we just kind of uh, stuck it on the inside and made a little bit of a, of a funnel to kind of help keep that corn uh, coming down to the center of it uh, so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't ever kind of jam up. Now on this, we've already done some of the leg work for you. We figured out by putting corn in there about what distance you need to be on these measurements on your pipe fittings so that the corn doesn't just fall out on the ground. First time I built one of these, I went to fill it up with corn and it all dumped out on the ground. Uh, so we figured out you need to take a T. This is just a uh, uh, thin wall PVC pipe that you can get at any Home Depot or hardware store. Uh, we're gonna use that. We're gonna have a nine inch piece of pipe that goes in between here and this is just a plastic stool flange, like you would bolt a stool down to. And that's gonna go inside there. And then you're gonna have two of these pieces that are cut at a, roughly a 20 degree angle. You don't have to get precise with that. We just like to cut them off at a bevel and that keeps the rain and snow from getting in there. Uh, those are gonna be seven inches and that's the measurement that you wanna make sure and get right. You don't wanna get much less than that or the corn will dump out on the ground, but seven inches from your square cut to the, the bevel part of your short side, and we're gonna glue those in there, and then we're gonna bolt that uh, to the feeder. So the first thing we're gonna do here, we're just gonna get out some regular uh, PVC cement. And we're just gonna glue these together. get too much on the patio, mama might get on to me. So there you go, we've got that part made. We're gonna glue the downspout in. And of course on this you can get as fancy as you want, sloppy as you want. Uh, you don't even have to paint it if you don't want. You can see we kind of threw some paint on our feeder there just because we wanted to kind of dress it up. And then after we get done, as you can see on the one that we have in the background, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll paint all this PVC uh, just so it doesn't stick out so bad. Not that the deer are gonna be concerned. You know, they're not, they're not gonna care one way or another as long as it's full of feed and uh, we ain't running into them and uh, scaring them all the time. Actually put the glue on the wrong side of that fitting. And that's gonna go in there. So we're gonna let that set up for a minute and then we're gonna jump up here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take just a three inch hole saw. This is a bimetal uh, hole saw. So it's gonna drill through this steel here and we're gonna drill a hole in here.
Okay, so we've got our hole drilled in the bottom of the barrel. So now we're ready to go ahead and switch bits and start assembling the, the uh, downspout and the feeder. All right, so what we're gonna do is on this stool flange right down here, it's already even got four pre-drilled holes on the, the one we got from our hardware store. What we're gonna do is try to center that right over the hole that we have, and then we're just gonna use some of these, uh, any kind of sheet metal screws with maybe like a washer on it to keep it from pulling through. Hopefully the deer aren't gonna get too rough with this. Uh, here in Northwest Arkansas, um, we're no longer allowed to feed till right up till season, so it's not as big of an issue on having a large volume feeder. Uh, nevertheless, it's like with any kind of wild game, the, the less time we can limit our scent and, and you know, our uh, presence in the woods, uh, it just helps keep the deer more active. So the only problem we have had is with things like bears. Uh, they get a little rough with it sometimes and they like to tear it up. Um, they're not going to do a whole lot to the steel barrel, but they might break this PVC off. One thing we like about it is this is a pretty cheap option. We found the barrels uh, for $15 on Facebook Marketplace, and then we uh, was able to get the PVC fittings and the pipe, the can of glue. We had some random spray paint laying around. So all in all, we've got less than uh, $30 uh, built uh, you know, in each one of these setups. Uh, so we're gonna be able to throw together three or four of these feeders uh, to scatter around for what we looked at that we could buy uh, any gravity feeder uh, on the market that would, would be comparable. Uh, we have already tested it. We can hit, hold just over five bags of corn uh, in these feeders. So uh, again, we're hoping to be able to set them up and hopefully that'll be able to to keep them loaded with corn for a while till we can get back out there and pull cards and check cameras. All right guys, we got that all put together and then all you need to do is put your lid on and put the lock on and it's all ready to go and we'll show you the finished product right here. So guys, this didn't take us 20 minutes tops to put together and now we have two 300 pound gravity feeders ready to go to Kansas and all you need is a ratchet strap to bring with you and strap it to the tree and you're good to go. So we're excited about it. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. We hope it helps you a lot. And I guess that's it. So until next time, guys, just remember to stay in, in his tracks. tracks.